preface from Bartholomew de la Casa's Destruction of the Indies. It says, The revered author of this compendious summary was Bartholomew de la Casas, alias Casas, a pious and religious person, as appears by his zealous transports in this narrative for promotion of the Christian faith, elevated from a friar of the Dominican order to sit in the Episcopal chair, who was frequently importuned by good and learned men, particularly historians, to publish this summary who so prevailed with him that he collected out of that copious history which might and ought to be written on the subject the contents of this concise treatise with intention to displaying into the world the enormities, etc., the Spaniards committed in America during their... So excess is kind of what he's saying, the Spaniards committed in America during their residence there to their eternal... Ign ignominy, and for the author finding that no admonitions or reprehensions, how mild soever, could operate upon a sink into the rocky-hearted tyrants in those western parts, occidental means western, oriental means east. He therefore took up a firm resolution, being then about fifty years of age, as he himself declares, to run the hazards and dangers by sea, and the risk of a long voyage into into Spain, there to acquaint and certify the most illustrious Prince Philip, the son of heir of his imperial majesty Charles V of blessed memory, with the horrid crimes perpetuated in those countries, part whereof he had seen, and part heard from such a boasted of, as boasted of their wickedness, whereupon his Caesarean majesty moved with a tender and Christian compassion towards these inhabitants of the countries of America, Languishing for want of redress, he called a council at Valladolid, Anno Denomity 1542, consisting of learned and able men, in order to the reformation of the West Indian government, and took such a course that from that time their tyranny and cruelty against those barbarians was somewhat repressed, and those nations in some measure delivered from the intolerable and more than Egyptian bondage or at least the Spaniards' ill usage and treatment of the Americans was alleviated and abated. This book, mostly historical, part typographical, was published first by the author in Spanish at Civil, after that translated into Latin by himself, and in process of time into High Dutch, Low Dutch, French, and now English, which is the sixth language it has been taught to speak. That any one of what nation soever might in this narrative contemplate and see as in a mirror the dismal and pernicious fruits that loque and attend of unlimited and close fisted avarice, and therefore learn to abhor and detest it, cane pigeons and ang, it being the predominant and chiefest motive to the commission of such ex inexpressible outrages as here in part are faintly not fully represented, which sin the pagan Indians themselves did exprobate in the Spaniards with all detestation, ignominy, and disgrace. For when they had taken some of them prisoners, which was rarely, they bound them hand and foot, laid them on the ground, and then pouring melted gold down their throats, cried out and called to them aloud in derision, Yield, throw up thy gold, O Christian. And for some reason I figured it was supposed to say God there, but maybe not, like throw up thy God, O Christian, but gold, O Christian, vomit and spew out the metal which hath so inquinated and envenomed both body and soul that hath stained and infected thy mind with desires and contrivances and thy hands with commission of such matchless enormities. I will then shut up all this, being but an ex extract of what is in the perfunctory part of the original. I earnestly beg and desire all men to be persuaded that this summary was not published upon any private design, sinister ends, or affection in favor or prejudice of any particular nation, but for the public emolument and advantage of all true Christians and world men throughout the whole world. Farewell. All right. Thanks for watching, and we'll get more. All right, you know what? Here, I'll go ahead and show you one more thing while I'm at it. I'm over here. It talks about how, like,
The only reason they did all this killing was for gold. Now the ultimate end and scope that incited the Spaniards to endeavor the extirpation and desolation of this people was gold only, that thereby growing opulent in a short time they might arrive at once at such degrees and dignities as were no ways consistent with their persons. So, just gold. All right. Talk to you later. Bye.